Glad to be back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. This, of course, is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. We're glad you've tuned in today. We have a lot to get to here on the program. I want to start with some contact information. As you're listening today, as you hear Kirk and Paul talk about some of the biggest issues, some of the biggest topics that are facing you as a retiree, maybe someone who's on the doorstep of retirement, make sure you have the phone number and the website nearby, 800-240-8981 or online at retirementplanningedu.org. Now, those two things, the the phone number and the website are going to be very, very important on today's show. And if you're in and out of your car today or in and out of the garage as you're listening, try to stay tuned for the whole program because we're going to be telling you about what takes place inside the courses that Kirk and Paul teach with the foundation, the Retirement Education Foundation. And Kirk and Paul, you talk about these courses all the time on the program, but this is really, uh, we're going to give our listeners a taste of what goes on during these eight-hour courses. We know it's a deep dive and we can't get into the whole thing today, but you cover a lot and we want to talk about that today. Great to be back with you. It's good to be back, Megan. And I'm really excited about today's show because, so, so Paul put this together. I think it's a great idea. We're going to do our best to take an eight-hour class, condense them down into multiple eight-minute segments. Not easy, but it will give you a really good idea of the topics we're covering. So we're limited on how deep we can dive, but we can give you the specific topics so you have an idea of what to expect when you attend these courses that you really need to attend. So I think the first thing we want to start with, Paul, is myths and misconceptions. And with myths and misconceptions, the three things that that I I think we should cover is stock picking is most important. I think that's what people think is the the investment you choose is going to drive your success in retirement. That is not true. I promise you that is not true. That we'll, we'll need to live on less in retirement. Another misconception, at least for people who have resources saved, those people who have greater than, you know, half a million dollars you're likely not going to want to live on less in retirement and you're likely not going to. And then how you're going to behave during many market events throughout retirement, how people think they're going to behave based upon how they've behaved in the past is not accurate. That's not what people do. They're going to react differently once they're retired. So Paul, start with stock picking. I, I, I know that many of the listeners, we have a lot of do-it-yourselfers listening today, think that stock picking is what's going to drive how successful they are in retirement. Well, it's, it's what everyone's been telling them, right? I mean, and, and, and while you've been, while you're younger and been working your whole life, you know, obviously your investments were really important, right? But, but, you know, every time you turn on the TV, you watch somebody who's telling you about stocks you should pick, right? Whether it's whoever it is, right? There's always, there's people on the news who are telling you, if you just pick this perfect stock, you're going to make a ton of money. That's that's the focus of our industry, right? That is the focus. That's their value proposition. That's right. That's the way they make money, right? right? That's the way they make money. But we know that when we look at who's successful in retirement, now we're talking about retirement, who is successful in the retirement? The people that are successful are not successful because they pick the right stocks. In fact, that, that really, I think, only equates to maybe three or 4% of success, right? I think it's like 95% of your success or 90% it is comes 90. from asset yep. allocation. It is. It's not stock picking, folks. It's not inve- the investments you choose. It's going to be when you take income from the different investments you choose. I know that's very difficult to understand and quantify because your whole life, your focus has been accumulating your wealth, growing your wealth. This is the first time in your life you're actually going to be pulling money out of your wealth, distributing that wealth. And when you take your money is what's going to drive success. So we break that down and explain how that works. In addition, we cover every aspect of a retirement plan, when, how, and t- to take income tax planning, estate planning, how to protect your surviving spouse. It's an eight-hour class, and all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend one of our courses. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, in some ways, it's, it's unfair because, you know, we're saying things that I think upend people's belief systems, right? I mean, honestly, 
wh- whoever who who does not think that picking stocks has a lot to do with your success. I mean, it, what we're saying is counterintuitive, right? People don't get it, but at the end of the day, the stocks you pick will not m- make a big difference in your whether you succeed or, or don't succeed in retirement. Just as this idea that you know, in retirement you can live on significantly less, right? People believe that. People think that once you retire, you won't need as much. But every time you meet somebody, Paul, it's it is such a misconception and a problem for retirees. Because they're going to attempt to live on less. And then when they're in their mid-70s, they're going to recognize they're forced to take so much more, right? There's so many variables. This, but, but here's the deal. Look, I, we know why you think you should live on less. Because that's what the industry has told you. That's what research has told you. The number is 78%. You consistently hear all you need is 78% of your income in retirement. The problem is many of you are comparing yourself to a group of people that is not similar to you. I know this is going to be difficult for a lot of our listeners to to hear, but you're not average. The average retiree will retire with $200,000 saved for retirement. That's it. The average retiree has $200,000 saved for retirement and will get over 90% of the income from Social Security. That's it. So if you have more than that, of course, so by the way, of course, if you're the average retiree, you're going to have to live on 78% less. If all you have is social security, you're obviously living on less. But the same research tells us that 66% of retirees will spend more money in the first five years of retirement than they did the last five years they were working. Our experience, the people who attend our classes who have one, two, three, four, five plus million dollars are going to live on more in retirement. You have a ton more free time. So these are some of the things, along with many other things, we cover in our classes. Now, these classes are taught at all the major universities. That's not an accident that we're teaching at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Troy Campus, and Novi Campus, Oakland University. We have a learning center in Livonia. We're also streaming the classes so you can... It, Look, COVID's scary. So people are choosing, some people are choosing to stay home and watch the class as we teach from the university. So you have the choice. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. To register, to attend one of the courses, or learn more about the class, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're glad to have you along on the program today. I'm Megan Mozak. We're talking today about the foundation's courses, and these are tremendous opportunities for you. If you're getting close to retirement, maybe you're newly retired, you want to gain a little bit more confidence, make sure you're on the right track. This is a deep dive into all things retirement, and they're taught at local universities. As you know, Kirk and Paul, we talk about this a lot on our show, what's covered, many, many topics, maybe even things you're not thinking about, or maybe it's things your advisor, your current advisor, isn't discussing with you. These are things you must know to have a successful retirement. You can learn more, of course, at the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. That's how you can get registered and learn more. And we've been talking about what is involved with these courses. As I mentioned, a lot of different topics. One of the key topics, Kirk and Paul, is income. And you say you have a different way of looking at how to generate income in retirement. Tell us more. Well, the most important thing, uh, the most important driver of success in retirement is your income planning. It's how you take your income, from where, and when. And the goals are to minimize something called sequence of return risk. That is the number one risk of all of baby boomers. That is the single biggest risk to a baby boomer today is sequence of return risk. Minimize taxes, which is very, it's relatively simple to do if you if you take the time to do it. Our industry doesn't do it for anyone. Everyone talks about it, but there's really no one strategically income planning to minimize taxes, right? And then it's it's protecting your surviving spouse. There are traps that happen. So, Paul, 
I think what happens is the philosophy people retire with is that when I retire, I'll determine my income based upon how my investments perform and how the market performs, right? And that is a, that can be a catastrophic mistake because, because we know once you turn 72 years old and required minimum distribution starts, you don't have that luxury anymore. That's gone. The second is the truth is our fear for people isn't that you're going to outlive your money. At least the people who attend our class, that's not, they have resources. You have saved money. It's that you guys are going to way underspend your money. Research is showing you guys are going to way underspend your money because of fear and anxiety. You can eliminate that fear and anxiety if you have a plan to be able to pivot no matter what the market events that are occurring. You have an account to pivot to, and you know what account to pivot to to take the income from, Paul. It's, again, not what you invest in, but it's when you're taking the money during different market events. Because, Paul, we know in retirement, they're going to have four to seven major market in life events that will impact people's ability to feel free to take money. And if they do it wrong, can cause them to outlive their money. Yeah. You know, I, I think I said a lot there. No, I no, I'm, no, no. I, I think the key, there are two key components to this. I think the first is, is that, is that, you know, there's a big difference between the, the, what we call the accumulation phase of your life and this distribution phase. And we're talking about income planning during this distribution phase when you ha- have to start paying yourself and, and, and the strategies are so different than when you're working. And I think, the second thing is this sort of ties to a myth and misconception, right? People are listening, probably are thinking, well, what's so complicated about this income planning? My advisor has me take 4% out for the rest of my life. Well, it's not right? complicated if you use the I- I- industry suggestions that's right. 4%. That's, which, exactly. That's right. That's our that, fear. That's the problem. The problem is people think – people. most people don't appreciate how complicated it is to actually do income planning. It's not just take 4% out. Well, unfortunately, uh, sincerely, that is what the industry promotes because it's simple, it's transactional, it's scalable. So it's more profitable for our industry to promote a very general basic strategy that truly wasn't designed for most of you. That It was devi- designed, at least most of our listeners, most of the people that come to our classes have a lot more than $200,000 saved for retirement. So if you have $200,000 saved, if you are the average baby boomer retiring with $200,000, yes, the 4% rule is fine. But you got a million dollars. You got $2 million. Are you kidding me? We're, build, we're teaching people how to build plans to take 7 8% per year in their mid-60s. Because imagine, Paul, they have, they have uh, 12 different accounts, investments, accounts, IRAs, non-IRAs, pensions, uh, social securities, and the ability to know when to pivot from a different type of risk profile and different type of an account to minimize sequence of return risk and also minimize taxes allows you to more aggressively to take income. And people ask us all the time, Paul, well, this this makes sense. This is common sense. Why isn't this what my advisor or the industry is promoting? It's because the planning we do in our private practice, it takes us 50 to 60 hours to build someone's plan today. That's how much time we spend. There's no one size fits all. There's no software. It's literally running iterations and making sure you have a, a, a lever to pull or a place to pivot to no matter what the event occurs. So, so yes. That's what we're teaching in the class, right. how to do that. Right. And, and so, right, the, the key is, and again, we spend a lot of time in the class that we can't do here. The key is knowing which accounts to take your money every year for the next 30 years so that you don't run into what you call, you know, face what we call sequence of return risk. So you aren't selling investments when the market's down 30%. You can't. You can't. You can't. So it's not as simple as just take 4% out of all of your accounts. It's really picking and choosing, setting up the right account so that if the market corrects, we have accounts to go to so that you aren't being forced to sell in a during a pandemic or a 2008 or whatever. So you said two very important things, Paul, there. So when the market does correct or we have a recession. And it will happen. Or a bear market. Of course, it's going to happen, happen four times in That's the right. next 30 years. That's for right. a lot of, four plus times for these people. It's going to happen. We know right. that. Right. But the two things that you said key is that you don't panic. Right. And sell. You cannot panic. Right. Two is that you don't change 
the amount of income you're living. You don't let short-term market events change your spending patterns because your window of being able to do things in retirement, we just lost another client, 68 years old, just another one. It's over 20 people in their 50s and 60s this year. You don't know when. So you have to have a plan that allows you to pivot where you're taking the income, not change your income or panic. And that's another that, that, that's another section of our class that we spend a lot of time talking about. Um, if you'd like to register for one of our eight-hour classes, eight hours, we're teaching two evenings or one full Saturday at all the major, basically all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. So much more to come with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Stay with us. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. This is the Retirement Education Hour. You know, Kirk and Paul, that <laughs> the show name is so well titled because really what this is each and every week is an education into what's going on in the world of retirement planning. A lot is changing. There's a lot of movement all the time that I know you keep track of. And it's so imperative that as we get closer to retirement, we are in the know when it comes to all of these different topics. It, really, the success of our retirement hinges on that. And that's why you have these courses taught at local universities so that we can be up to date. We can be educated on all things retirement. If you haven't signed up yet for one of these courses, I would encourage you to do that right now. Here's the phone number, 800 240 8981. You can also sign up online if that's easier. Retirementplanningedu.org. Retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk and Paul, you've been walking us through some of the inner workings of these courses, uh, giving us a taste of what we'll learn, what we'll come away with. We've been talking about income because I know this is such a central focus of the courses that you teach. And you want to spend a little bit more time talking about what we need to know on this topic. Yeah, I, I think we need to take a little bit of a step back, and, I, and we're struggling a little bit today trying to give the highlights of what a class, an eight-hour class looks like, and break them down into eight-minute segments. What, what do we do? Six eight-minute segments. Eight hours isn't going to fit into what equates to 48 minutes. It's not going to happen. So, in, so we don't want to dig too deep, but conceptually the different topics and why they're so important that we're covering. Right. And I think probably the number one risk for retirees, I don't think I know it's a fact. Academia has been screaming this for years and our industry has muted that screaming and keeping it from you all the baby boomers is that the risk is called sequence of return risk. And let me tell you how serious this risk is. If we have a mate, if we have a market event in the first five years of your retirement, the chances of you outliving your money increase by over 80%. If we have a market event in the first five years, the chances of you outliving your money increase by 80%. I, I, I'm not, I know it sounds crazy. Th that is the number. And I think it's helpful to give a basic explanation of sequence of returns. We spend a lot of time in the class and go through multiple examples. In fact, Paul, on our website, retirementplanningedu.org, we have an interactive calculator and a white paper specifically so you can play around with different returns and how it would impact your 30-year retirement and what sequence of return is. So here it is, real quick, Paul. It's the sequence of the market returns and when you're taking money out of that investment. So if you had an investment that you deferred for 20 years and it had an average 10% rate of return, I put a million dollars in account, I don't touch it for 20 years, and it performs at a little over 10% on average, you would have $5 million. 20 years later. By the way, that's all you had to do with your investments is buy the S&P 500. Our industry's a fraud. That's not that complicated. Just by the index, you would have won. I'm sorry. I had to throw that in, Paul. Now, here's the difference when you retire. Same account, same returns, same average 10% rate of return over a 20-year period of time. But now I'm retired and I have to withdraw 5% a year every year out of that account. I'm averaging 10% return, 
and I'm withdrawing 5%, and I'm going to do that for 20 years. Well, unfortunately, your million dollars would run out at 17 years. You would run out of money. Even though you had an average rate of return of 10% and you were only taking out 5%, you would run out of money in 17 years. Tell me what happens early, and that will determine whether or not you outlive your money or not. Paul, explain. It's a, how it works. Well, I, I, I just want to say I, that was a excellent explanation, and, and I just want to bring, bring it back to the class. When we talk about income planning, that's why income planning and retirement so different than obviously when you're younger, right? Because the key here is don't ever be in a position where you are selling your investments when the market's down significantly, especially early on in your retirement. So let me just say this. S- selling your investments to create income. To create, to create income. Thank you. Very important. Very important. So we spend a lot of time in the class talking about, okay, if, if we're not doing that, then what are we doing? And that's the key to planning. We actually sit down in the class and we teach people, okay, what do we need to do to avoid that scenario? What do we need to do today in anticipation that one day that is going to happen so that you are never in a position to sell your investments for your income? And, and, and that, let me just say, the option isn't, well, I just won't take income. That's not an option. Besides the fact that I'm assuming you all want to enjoy your life, at 72 years old, you have no choice, right? So we spend at least an hour, hour and a half in the class we do talking about the strategies you need to do to avoid that, which is probably the greatest risk you all will face. It is the greatest risk. And, and Paul, I know some people listening, because I hear that we hear this in the class sometimes, is that's what I have my my... 25% bonds or 40% right, right. bonds. That's right. the, but, but bonds. Bond funds. Yeah, bond funds. Bond funds and, and, and stocks, equities, over the last five years have been over 90% correlated. They, in other words, when the, the market is down, your bonds have been down. Not a little, a lot. I mean, there was a point this year where the 20-year treasury was down 12% this year. We're telling you that isn't the solution. You have to have – it's not about what investment to use, guys. People think that we're talking about like some magical investment that you – it's not the investment. It's having different types of risk profiles and different types of buckets to pivot to, accounts to pivot to, depending on the market conditions. It's so hard to do this because because we just don't have the time to get into it, I right? know. And, and I see you're struggling because you want to get into it. We don't have the time. We don't. At <clears throat> the end of the day, th- that's why we. That's why the course is eight, eight hours, not eight minutes, right? I am telling you, I promise you over the next five years, everybody's going to start hearing about this because the industry's f- going to find a way to scale this. They're going to find some software that... Uh, uh, some software that's going to be able to help them to speed up this process. But right now it doesn't exist and it hasn't existed. That's why they come up with these simple solutions for people. And that's why most of you who have resources, wealth, you're going to way underspend what you otherwise could spend because they're going to err on the side of caution. So will you. You will panic. You will reduce your spending. And you don't need to. You shouldn't. It's just understanding how to design in all the mechanics that need to be designed for a plan. So that's why you need to attend this eight hour course. It's at all, we teach them at all the major universities. We're also streaming it live so you can stay in the comfort of your home during COVID. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 240 89 We'll be back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you're with us today, Megan Mozak, alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation, and I want to tell you more about those courses that the foundation sponsors, and these are held at local universities. If you have not signed up, if you have not attended, I want to make sure you do, and here's why. In this ever-changing world, and we know we're seeing changes in D.C. with taxes, we're seeing the economy, who knows what's going to happen, come down the line. You do not want your retirement success hinging on what happens on Wall Street or Washington, D.C. These courses are designed to help you do that, to get out in front of some of the challenges of a 21st century retirement so you can have confidence and, most importantly, so you can enjoy 
this time. This is why we've worked so hard. And the great news is we have Kirk and Paul as our guide here on the show each and every week. And this is really a special show. We would encourage you, if you can, listen all the way through because they're giving you a taste of what the course is like. And mentioning that course, I want to be sure that I give you the phone number and give you the website to register. You can do it by calling 800-240-8981. Here it is again, 800-240-8981. You can also go online, retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk and Paul, one of the things I know you cover at the course is Social Security, and this is a big one. This is a really important foundational decision. And, you know, it catches a lot of people by surprise. There are so many different ways to claim Social Security. How do you help people make that choice? Well, a couple things. The way we approach and teach about Social Security is not conventional. Not what most people, when they're going to a Social Security seminar... Look, there are we're we're not going to be you're not going to be able to figure out your best strategy. I, I'm going to tell you right now, you can't do it without coming to this class because the tools our industry is providing a calculator is not the net benefit that you end up with in your pocket over your lifetime. You're missing everything. The two variables that trigger when and how you should take Social Security. Literally, there's hundreds of claiming strategies and thousands of rules. The two variables, Paul, is health, but health does not always trump. That's the problem. Some people think taxes. Look, how Social Security is going to be taxed and how your IRAs, your dividends and capital gains are taxed are all impacted by one another. Here is the tax planning the industry does not do anything with. They're unwilling to touch. They don't want the liability. Most of the bigger firms don't allow them to to, to do tax planning. Your CPA is only going to look at tax planning for this year, last year, and maybe a, a, a year forward. But you really have to look forward 10, 20 years to work backwards to know the best and most effective way to take your Social Security. It impacts everything. Taxation on Social Security, taxation on your IRAs, taxation on your dividends and your capital gains. It also impacts what you invest in. It's holistic. It's a puzzle, Paul. Well, I was going to say it it does. and, 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 And what you invest in in particular, is hugely important as as it relates to when and how you take Social Security. So I think we need to take a few minutes yes. because the investment section of our class is huge as well. It all ties together, right? Taxes, we're going to talk about next segment. Income, we were just talking about, right? right. It, it, it Social all, Security. It all works together. Right. And, and it's it's got to be holistic. We can't make these decisions in isolation or in a vacuum anymore. And I think when it comes to investments, I know this is probably the part everyone wants to hear, right. but it's simple. It's really simple, guys. It's all about stocks, individual bonds, and ETFs. Did you notice nowhere in there did we say mutual funds? You all have now graduated. There is absolutely no reason any of you who have over half a million dollars should own mutual funds anymore. I'm telling you, I don't want to pick on the UBSs and the Edward Jones and the Merrill Lynch. I'm I'm saying Raymond James. I'm saying them all so no one says I'm picking on them. You don't and shouldn't own mutual funds anymore. There is no world that exists where the wealthy needs mutual funds, especially when we know of all the hidden costs. It's it's not a secret anymore. You need to know that your net expense ratio, Paul, they have to know this. They need to watch the PBS Frontline Retirement Gamble. That was filmed in, what, 2013 or whatever? It still applies. It still applies. Nothing's changed. There are so many hidden costs with mutual funds. It's not your net expense ratio. I know Vanguard's the least expensive, but there are still tons of additional fees hidden in actively managed mutual funds. I'm not saying index funds, actively managed mutual funds. You're paying, depending on what study you want to believe, good or the pro pro mutual fund, anti-mutual fund, one and a half to two and a half percent a year in total fees in your mutual funds. So we're talking about investments, right? Yes. And, and you just make, I think you, you, I think you hit it right on. We spent a lot of time talking about why not mutual funds, and we talk a lot about ETFs and other alternatives, right? Yep. The other thing we talk a lot about is the difference between owning an individual bond and a bond fund, because almost everybody listening 
has bond funds. They didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice. And I think people don't really appreciate the difference between – I think people assume if I have a bond fund, I have bonds. So what's the problem? There's a huge difference. Massive problem because – and we're not going to get into all the reasons. Look, your bond funds, the experts, uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan are telling you over the next 10 years are not going to perform. They're not going to make money. A actively managed bond fund in a rising interest rate environment, it, it is almost impossible to see a scenario where it can make money. That isn't going to be the solution. You've got to find different solutions. We're not saying no bonds. You need to understand within bonds, there are different asset classes. And unlike stocks, you can have asset classes of bonds where that's, that, that's performed really well and asset classes within bonds that have performed really poorly. You don't have that in equities. In the stock market, some perform better than others, but you won't have one that's way up and then one way down. It doesn't work that way. So this is a big topic in our class to understand the different tools that are available for a retiree within the investment world and what, how to own stocks and individual bonds and ETFs and to construct your portfolio for income planning and tax planning. And your Social Security planning. It all goes together. So, boy, I, I, I sound manic today. I'm passionate today, right? It's that important. Attend an eight-hour course. You can do it from your home or you can do it in one of the universities. We're teaching at just about every major university now. Eight hours it's done over two evenings or one full Saturday. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. And you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler for the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us. Kirk and Paul, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And I want to tell you, if you are interested in those courses that are taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University, I would encourage you, get registered right away. You can do that at 800 800- 240-8981 or go to retirementplanningedu.org. You know, I say that because there is some urgency here. When it relates to retirement, as we've been talking about, things are changing in the environment. You have a short window to take advantage of certain opportunities that could help your retirement and your retirement future. And I want you to get in the know. Kirk and Paul want you to get educated on some of those things. We're mentioning uh, throughout the program today some of the the topics that are covered at these courses. And I know, Kirk and Paul, taxes is a huge topic that's covered extensively at the course. And this is important that we talk about because there really is a sense of urgency here as we look at the horizon and what could be coming toward us in terms of tax rates. Well, so this segment is probably going to bother me the most because we need this is a this is a show. This is such a major part of our class. We spend hours on taxes in our class, literally because there's that many variables and ways to manage taxes. So, I think what we should do is just hit the high levels here, right? So, so first, we have to take our if 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 you're one where your head's buried in the sand thinking your taxes are going down, they're not. They can't. Taxes are on sale. Taxes are going to go up over the next 10 years. There's not a debate. It has to happen, right? So knowing taxes are going to go up in your retirement, you need to appreciate the less taxes you pay once you retire, the longer your money lasts. We're not looking at tax avoidance. We're trying to minimize taxes, understanding how to manage the tax brackets, by looking forward to see what liabilities you're going to have to pay, then run iterations, example after example, working backwards to find the most efficient path to minimize taxes so your money lasts longer. It's really this simple, Paul. If I want $150,000 a year net after taxes to live on, the difference between being forced to take out, let's say, one hundred ninety. dollars to get your 150 to live on 
versus someone who could take out 157 or 155 to get 150 is huge. 10, 20, 30, $40,000 a year tax savings extends your life of your money that much further. And it also minimizes the sequence of return risk because you're pulling less money out of volatile markets to pay taxes. It all works together. It's so complicated. Everyone in our industry is talking about tax planning, but no one's doing it and no one's teaching it. Well, I, I'm, I'm so glad you, you brought this back to sequence of return risk because it, it, one of the best strategies to minimize that sequence of return risk is tax planning. Again, another example of how, how they, all of these sort of fit together. Uh, uh, you know, under the whole heading of tax planning, for those listeners who are a little charitable, yeah. right, and may not be financially benefiting anymore because of the standard deductions, we spend a lot of time talking about, you know, charitable planning, whether it's, you know, we talk about donor advised funds or charitable trusts or quali- QCDs. QCDs, qualified charitable distributions. How do you give money to your your your, your lo- you know your local charities the charities that matter to you how do you do it and feel good about yourself and at the same time still get a financial benefit there are ways to do it and it's all intertwined with if you do it right again it it helps us with with tax planning it helps us with income planning sequence of return sequence risk, of return risk. I, 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 Paul I'm telling you and I interrupt you because I'm so f- excited this is this is a topic I'm most passionate about is tax planning if you're philanthropic if you're giving to charity now or when you die i promise you you're missing opportunities i guarantee you there's a more efficient way to do it the wealthy have mastered the most effective way to minimize taxes for themselves particularly when they're philanthropic that has not been passed down to you we pass that down to you so you can use it on a smaller scale based upon your net worth you just don't have the teams of people to build and create these strategies for you. You need to learn them, and we'll teach them to you in the class. Paul, one more thing. Everyone's talking about Roth converting. Everybody, this so, is much new, confu- so much confusion right there now. There is. There's a big buzz. First of all, they're not taking your Roth converting away. Stop. It's, people are getting confused. They're, they're, they're talking about eliminating something called backdoor Roths, which I'm sort of glad because – most of you who are doing it are doing it wrong. I, you're going to say you're not. You're doing it wrong. The IRS doesn't have a way to audit to stop you from doing it wrong. Thank goodness, because many of you would not like the outcome if there was a process for them to audit you. So that's why the IRS is talking about getting rid of it. It's sort of a loophole. People are taking advantage of, and they're doing it wrong. So they're going to get rid of it. Roth conversions are not going away. They are not going away. The government loves Roth conversions. They get the tax dollars now. Oh, you're going to hear, and you probably already started, but every one of your advisors, everyone talk about it, you need a Roth convert. And they're going to say, okay, Roth convert to the top of the 22 bracket, 22%, or the top of the 24% bracket. Go talk to your CPA, and t- they'll tell you how much. That is crazy. You can't make a Roth conversion today based upon today's situation. You need to make your Roth conversions today based upon what your future situations are going to look like. When you're forced to take all of the required minimum distributions, when you're forced to take your Social Security and your pensions, when you have in your mid-70s the remarkable amounts of money that you're going to be forced to take that are all taxable, you need to understand what brackets you're going to be in the future And what your, not the bracket, your effective rate is going to be in the future to be able to determine how much you should be Roth converting today. It is a puzzle, folks. It's not one decision, one year, one investment, one process. They all need to work together. That's where it takes us 50 to 60 hours to build a plan. It's one of the reasons it takes us eight hours to teach a class. And people wish we would teach us a second eight-hour class along with it. Because there's that much information. So do yourself a favor. You want the best retirement you potentially have. You want the freedom to spend money that I know. We know you're not going to spend. Attend an eight-hour course. You have nothing to lose. You can do it from your home, or you can come to one of the universities where we're teaching it. It's only $29, right? It's a donation to charity, $29. Okay? All you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. 
retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. This is the Retirement Education Hour here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler from the Retirement Education Foundation. Want to make sure you have the website if you're ready to reserve your spot at the upcoming courses that the foundation sponsors at local universities. You can do that by going to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register 800-240-8981. Again, 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, this really all comes down to having a plan. Throughout the show, we've talked about a lot of different topics, right? From Social Security and income to investments and, of course, taxes. But you can't just piece these things out one by one. They all have to speak to one another, don't they? Well, they do. I think one of the takeaways people get from the class, Paul, is that how many more levers, how many more decisions that need to be made and created for them for retirement. How different that looks than when they were accumulating wealth. When they were accumulating wealth, it was really simple. I shouldn't say simple. It wasn't easy, but there was two levers to pull, savings and investing. That was it. Now it gets much more complex. There's a lot of levers. And I think that's one of the takeaways people get is when we teach them what real retirement, truly holistic retirement planning looks like, They realize it's very much like a puzzle, and there are many, many pieces to that puzzle that all need to fit together. And that's difficult for people to get their arms around sometimes. It is. And and I feel shortchanged a little bit today because I feel like we're not really getting into all of the things. It, these are sort of, you know, we're just touching the subject. But, I mean, one, you know, one of the big things that everyone's worried about health care. As we get older, everybody worries a little about we, – we have a whole segment. We talk about long-term care. How do you do long-term care planning, right? We spend a lot of time talking about if you're married, one of you is going to die first. How do you protect the surviving spouse? There's a lot of decisions that have to be made. That's a big one. Really, everything we're doing is in anticipation of what could happen in the future. And we try to plan today for what we are worried about in the future. You know, if you're married, one of you is going to die. We really have to think about how do we help that surviving spouse. Paul, people assume when, when we talk about legacy, that we're talking about kids, we're talking about the surviving spouse. There are, there are, there are trapped. We're not exaggerating. Like, look, here's a good one, when, or a bad one, actually. But when one spouse predeceases the other, that surviving spouse will end up in a much higher tax bracket, paying much more taxes, and Medicare premiums for many of you who have wealth, resources in your retirement accounts, that's going to go up for that surviving spouse too. So their income goes down, their taxes go up because they go from married filing joint to single paw. We know that's going to happen. One of it's going to happen. to one. Of, so if you know today plan that something's going to happen in the future, you plan for it. And right. there are so many ways. Most of our surviving spouses in our private practice pays very little to no income taxes and they are in a great position. But Planning sometimes 20, 30 years in advance, right? right? So can I say one thing? Yes. You, you said something about legacy. Let's not assume there are people who are listening who also care about leaving money to their children, right? Or their charities. We also spend a lot of time talking about just legacy and estate planning. Big mistakes being made there, Paul. That's right. We spend a lot of time talking about estate planning. Another subject that is important for people to understand. I, I, I tell you, our listeners right now, I got many of them that their contingent beneficiaries on their retirement accounts are their children. It's their spouse, then their children. Right. That That's a mistake. If you have wealth, that's a mistake. If you're leaving $500,000 to an IRA, do you want half of your IRA to go to your ex-son-in-law or daughter-in-law after you die? Because your kids have about a 50% chance of divorce, right? So there are so many mistakes that people are making that industry's ignoring. You know how many people I meet go to their attorney to have a trust done and their attorney doesn't know their investments? Or how much they have, or anything, any specifics. There's no planning being done. Yeah. So the- it, one, one more thing. Yep. I think your favorite topic. How do you choose an advisor? Right. We have a whole right. a whole section. Why and why 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 do we teach people how to choose? Well, most people have no clue on how to choose an advisor. That's right. See, the class is a filter. It gives you the tools to understand all the levers that can be pulled, so you can weed through the BS of our industry to know if someone just talks on buzzwords that never does it or are they really 
utilizing strategi- strategies to get you the best outcome. So we spend we spend close to an hour. How do you choose an advisor? How do you do a background check? Are they a fiduciary? How do you know if they're a fiduciary and a broker? Are they getting commissions or fees? How do they get paid? We give interview questions. How do you interview the advisor to make sure you're getting a comprehensive retirement plan just working with someone that specializes in accumulating your wealth. Paul, the problem for a lot of people who have advisors, there's a relationship. I'm going to tell you, most of you who have advisors right now, that is not the advisor that you're going to want to work with in retirement to give you the best outcomes, to give you the freedom to spend. If you stay with the same advisor, the result will be you will spend far less in retirement than you could have because they don't specialize in retirement planning. And you'll know that after you come to the class, because you'll know all the levers that should be considered and being pulled and discussed. And when you realize that, it doesn't make that person a bad advisor. It doesn't make it a bad relationship you've had. It's kind of like graduating from your general practitioner to the specialist who's going to perform the surgery. Your general practitioner who's taking care of your whole life isn't doing your neurosurgery or your orthopedic surgery. You are entering a phase of life where you need a surgeon and we're going to teach you how to choose that advisor. Does that make sense, Paul? That was per- perfect explanation. Yeah. Good. So if I could say one more thing about that. And, and the key to that is we, we recognize two things. One is this is so complicated. You're not going to be able to do it on your own. And, and the second thing is, you know, we teach this class to educate you so you can do it and figure this out. We're not doing it because we're, we're hoping you, bec- we, you, know, you become a client of ours. We can't take. We can only help 40% of the people right, that right. want our help. But we want to help people figure out how to go find the right advisor, right? So That's the key. you need to attend one of our classes that are taught at U- University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We're streaming them live. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register... Go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.